So we're going to go over SpectreLink, uh, what it what it is a little bit, um, an overview, high level, um, and then we're going to try to bring on the server and register the phones and just try to get um, replicate some calling uh, capabilities on the phones. Okay, so uh, first off, what is SpectreLink? SpectreLink is a <clears throat> company. Um, I think they're actually based out in Europe somewhere. Um, they build decked phone solutions. They're, they actually build and manufacture several different types of phones, Wi-Fi phones included, similar to Cisco's Wi-Fi phones, but um, one of their probably tried and true um, platforms is their um, decked platform. And obviously, as, uh, as I had mentioned previously, the DEC technology is, is uh, tried and true. It's, it's something that's in you know, regular households and residences. Uh, when you talk about wireless phones, it's DEC technology. Um, it operates in the 1.9 gigahertz range. So it's kind of a successor to the old 900 megahertz uh, first generation wireless phones. So DEC technology came out in the 90s. Um, and basically, SpectraLink, what they're doing is they're taking that technology and applying it to the business world. So these phones, for all intents and purposes, can replicate and emulate the same capabilities of um, business phones, uh, and actually with multiple phone systems as well. So Cisco being one of them, I know Avaya is another, uh, Shortel is another, um, I believe Mitel as well. So their whole approach is to build the technology and have compatibilities with multiple systems, kind of using a, a an open platform uh, to be able to integrate uh, seamlessly with these uh, systems. And that said, the the their solutions have to be tweaked a little bit, and they have to be compatible with, um, made to be compatible with that particular system, okay? So, for example, we might have a single 7600 or 7200 model phone that can be used for multiple systems. However, the software um, that gets uh, installed and on the, both on the Cisco side um, and actually on, on possibly the SpectraLink side as well, will be specifically made and designed for the Cisco platform. So calling is one thing, but being able to do some advanced functions similar to what businesses use, such as music on hold and paging groups and um, maybe not paging groups, but other, other types of uh, systems uh, solutions, such as hunt groups and, and other um, similar things to how the Cisco phones are used. That kind of capability is kind of what SpectraLink brings to the table. Okay, so really at the end of the day, um, it's supposed to work more reliably than other wireless uh, types of architectures for on the phone side for the Cisco environment. So what I'm going to do is kind of show you a diagram here that I found on a SpectraLink site. This kind of overlays the the main elements of the architecture so we can talk through it a little bit just so you get familiar. So really this whole ecosystem here is pretty much kind of representative of everything SpectraLink makes. Okay. Um, what we are focusing on on the Cisco side and the parts that are certified to work as a solutions plus um, kind of partnership with SpectraLink and Cisco are what we call the IP DEC 400, and I believe the 6500 is also compatible with Cisco. And those are, are the server components slash base stations slash, um, well, really just the, uh, the server and base station. And then the phones themselves, okay? So here's how it's kind of laid out. And try to get a really strong grip on understanding this uh, because it gets a little confusing at first because everything looks the same. 
Okay, so what we're going to zero in on are these 400. It's called an IP DEC DECT, IP dash DECT, and 400 is the model. Okay, and I, I, I gave you guys one so you can see what it what it looks like. Um, this little white device here, it's very small um, as far as the, you know the, the actual physical device looks. Uh, looks kind of just like an antenna. Okay, so the housing of it, it actually is something Spectralink uses for various purposes. So that same housing that you see on the uh, the DEC 400 is is how the base station looks. Okay, so as you can see here, and then the repeaters also look the same, and then the antennas look the same. So just by looking at a device. A physical device, you're not going to know what it is unless you kind of zero in a little bit and look at the uh, some of the details, maybe the serial number, part number, things like that. Okay, but for the most part, um, it's it's literally just the housing. Okay, the internals are kind of what separates the different functionality of the devices. Okay, so we're going to kind of just focus on the server, the base station. And then the repeaters and antennas, these are just kind of extensions of, of the server and base station. Okay. So what this is, is at the very core, there is a server function. Okay. And this is kind of a logical explanation, logical separation of duty. Okay. The server is literally think of it as a web server that's running on the device. It's going to generate uh, an IP uh, address that you can log into, and then there's a GUI that you can do, perform various functions and, and add the, uh, the phones, the users, tweak the configuration, do everything that you need to do, all the dials and knobs, right? And then there's a base station function. The base station is literally just the radio that is the base anchor for where the phones will connect to and attach to. Okay. Now the IP deck 400 incorporates both of these logical functions on the same device. Okay. You can actually order a separate base station. As you can see here in this diagram, it won't be an IP deck 400. It'll be a base station model number um, that is literally just a radio. It's a radio base station. It has no IP address, no server function. Okay. And really the, the, the idea here of why these are kind of separated is because for scalability purposes, you can actually build out um, multiple base stations. You can build out, um, have multiple servers, so on and so forth. Okay, but again, the IP deck 400 incorporates both of those on one device. Okay, the repeater is the same thing. It looks like the same physical device, but it has no wires attached to it. As you can see, there's no lines coming off of it because all it is is literally a repeater. It's a radio repeater. So it'll have a you know power source um, that you need to plug into. But let's say we put this you know, in a, in a warehouse scenario that's very large, maybe one single base station is not going to be strong enough to pick up the signal all across the warehouse. So you might want to use a repeater and place it at the far end of the warehouse, power it up, and that repeater is wirelessly going to connect to this base station to extend the signal, okay? And now it gets to how we do multiple access points, 802.11 access points. Um, and, you know, the repeating function of a um, access point that has no wiring uh, capability to just extend the signal. It's so similar to that, but it's, it's actually a lot simpler because um, this is a very, like I said, lean protocol, um, and it, it literally just will extend the signal without any uh, little to any configuration at all, okay? And then down here, you have the external antennas, okay? And the external antennas look the same again, but as you can see, there's a line because these external antennas 
can also extend the, the radio signal of a server or a base station by plugging in to that server or base station, okay? Um, really, the application here, uh, in my mind, is when the server or base station has to be installed or mounted at a location that's not really convenient or not really centralized for wide area coverage, maybe under a desk or, or something, for example. Um, and, but the antenna can be installed maybe uh, at a higher location or a centralized location for that's more conducive to um, you know, serving the, uh, the wireless phones, and it could just be placed somewhere more convenient. And in this case, you would use an, an antenna, okay? And that just kind of plugs into any of those devices. So really bringing it back home, this is the most important thing to understand is the server and base station and the very simple deployment. These, the, the IP Deck 400 incorporates the main components, okay? These repeaters and antennas, think of them as anything extra that you need to extend the signal, but at the core, you have to have a server and base station. And I should also mention the media resource aspect of it, which is also uh, a logical, you know, um, a function, is also on this IP Deck 400. And really, all that is is it has um, software, firmware stored on. Okay, because if you think about it, a base station is just the radio, the server is just the GUI, the management interface. And then you have to have the media resource, which actually has firmware. It can it can actually update phones through that this function as well. Okay. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm going to go move on to bringing up the uh, the servers.